welcome to comfy cozy up so today is sunday so i'm starting this vlog early uh because i got my book that i want to read but i'm going before i get into the book because um i left it downstairs yeah yeah <laughs> um let's get into crafting stuff of course but today i am working on a calendar so i hope to get this calendar up in two hours um, so it's about one o'clock now, so I'm hoping to get the calendar up by three, four o'clock the latest. I'm literally just rearranging the, um, the 31 words. Um, I'm putting them in, so typically I do, I put them in first, and then I look at the dates on the calendar and how to organize it. So right now I'm just plugging the words that I want to use from the list, the long list that I got, which I appreciate that I had a long list. Um, and then of course... I pull out dictionaries because sometimes I don't know what these words mean. <laughs> so this way that I am plugging in with words that are, um, you know, making sure they're not similar words that are being used and also where I want to put them. There are maybe, I think there were three words on here that I know, but I don't really know. I'm not even going to lie. There's about two words that for sure I don't know exactly what it means. So I have to <laughs> look it up. And then I rearrange it. Then I will um, put in the dates um, for the workshop. There is a workshop this time around. First time ever. Um, so I put the date for that. So this way people know what date. And then I will wait in August to give you the list. Because... Um, this way you guys don't forget, but I will give the list definitely due in August. It's very simple stuff because the workshop's going to be about creating your own stuff without using advanced stuff is in without having to use a sewing machine like I normally do for some of my bigger books. Um, but you can do it without that simple needle and thread or stapler. Um, so we're going to do, um, using household stuff that you may have um and also your favorite things so that's the goal that i'm going to go for but i will talk more in detail as august come because it is um let's give you the date so the date is, is going to be on the 20th of august so that is the date that um i will be doing the workshop so write that down in the calendar it is always going to be at three o'clock on a sunday so it's sunday the 20th 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So put that in your calendar for those of you who want to. It is going to be on Zoom because this is going to be interactive where you can see everybody. We as a group do it and chit chat and talk about the journaling process as well as creating something. So I will give you all that information leading up. So if you follow me on Instagram, you will get it first. Um, I'm on here on YouTube. I will um, suggest that you will reach out to me. <coughs> Sorry by email and that's how I'm going to do it so yeah every time I get on the camera that's when I want to cough so anyway that's what I'm going to do so I'm going to work on this and I get back to you because the battery is flashing so that means the battery is about to die so let me charge up the battery and I will get back to you when this is done and I will show you my excited book that I am that I have started already and I'm gonna focus on all week this is why I'm starting the video so early because this book is gonna take me all week it's a it's a bit of a chunky one um, so see you in a few minutes all right guys so I am done it is 3 15 and so I'm gonna post the calendar I'm also I'm gonna finish up in a few I'm gonna get something to eat um, a little hungry um i am gonna grill today as well but i'm gonna grill later i'm just gonna get a snack but and then i'm gonna do the one for and post it on the blog so those of you who don't have instagram you can um get it on the blog as well which i will post to let you guys know when it is up it'll be up before way before this video way before this video goes up this video won't be up until a week <laughs> so um so the calendar will be up so i'll post it like in the community section so everybody know that the calendar is up
all right guys so i'm outside and i am barbecuing and while the food is going i am going to be reading this but I'm also going to be doing my entry my journal entry for the day outside um so i haven't done that in a while um but anyway this book is one of or the most anticipated book i had for this year like i was looking forward to this book it took a while to get here there's some circumstance behind it but you know no hard feelings because I love the author Vanessa Riley. She is the queen when it comes to writing historical fiction that focuses on women um, from the past in the Caribbean. So it is considered fiction because, of course, she's just using an assumption of what she may these women may have experienced. Um, in this case, this is the first queen and the only queen that for Haiti, and her name was Louis, Marie Louise Christopher. And she was married to the first king. And in this story so far, I'm about 80, page 84. It started out where she's exiled. She's already in Europe and she's there with her daughters. And in this, you're learning, it, you, you're getting a taste of what happened and why she left. The experience she had with her husband. And there's that lot of political things that's happening so this is a heavily historical fiction um, because she used actual real facts in between um, some of the chapters you will see um, where she got some of her information from like as you can see here um, and so again when it comes to her historical fiction she digs in she does her research her research are definitely um, seen in the storyline so where um, you can see her creativity come in where she put the pieces together of what she doesn't know which is why it's considered in, of course fiction um, what I would say is so far what I'm learning is because I've read the other book um, um, sister woman warrior um, the book prior to this where they got their freedom there this is like the stages where they are struggling to get independent um, not independent to be considered a country um, and there's that um, allies that are not supportive um, including the US and then you also have France who are trying to put them in debt and milk them dry in that country so you have in this where her husband the king is wanting to live the life of what he expect a ruler of the nation to be but technically can't afford it technically cannot um, so while I'm reading this it's just it's, it's I'm just thinking of the mental state of people who are trying to live up to the standard that enslaved them and which makes this part of the story is like I'm scratching my head of the, the mindset of the king in um, you know her husband and also the roles that women played in getting their freedom but in this case it's like they had to step a couple of steps back um, so um, very interesting my cup of tea um, again if you are not into historical fiction and heavy on historical fiction um, you, I don't know how well you would like this because she really is a historical fiction author she gives you the history she makes you look up because I, I literally was starting to do my own research as I'm reading this for certain things that came up certain characters that is mentioned in this um, so I'm enjoying it and I am going to be reading this uh, for the week I think let's see how much page um, it's not as bad oh she has no in the back but I'm not gonna read them yet till I'm done um, so this book is a little under five I mean it's 420 um, but of course the font is small guys so even though it's 420 it, it really more than that because <laughs> the font is small um, but um, I'm here for it it is interesting and I'm gonna continue uh, reading this so for now though I'm gonna do my quick journal in for the day and then get some reading done.
day three of the Queen of Exile and this is story of of course Louise Marie Christophe yes <laughs> now because I, I'm really fascinated with um, Haitian Revolution and pretty much everything leading up to even now that I'm so intrigued by this storyline in a way where I think about it in in such a I'm, I feel like the Haitian history is so powerful inspirational but very complicated and as time messy I also the 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 there's a particular song which I will talk about at the end that comes to mind when I think of things that happen here. But I'm going to sum that up at the end. But there is that hold of removing yourself from um, I felt in this where you have the king and the king is when you think of it the king was once a slave. And Louise, the queen, was never a slave. So there's that mentality of thinking of how one wants to be seen by the colonizer. And so in this story, what I'm getting is you can see the struggle of the expectation and the wants and why it's needed versus do the right thing kind of thing in this. Um, I do like where in the story you are getting the before and the after. So you are getting what led to her getting exiled. Um, the relationship she has with the, her husband. The relationship with the kids. And then the political things that were happening and, and how the, the husband was um, handling certain things. And the frustration that was coming from the, the people of Haiti at the time or oh, Haiti Haiti let me know if I'm pronouncing it right um, and then of course you're getting when she was exiled the aftermath and the expectation and the things that our people are sorry guys I got blurry there um, also the expectation that some people have um, and think of what's been written because of the fact is she comes off educated she comes off um knowing several different language and the um how she dresses how she carry herself is it's that idea of think of it it is this is the 1800s and these are not expectation they ex they thought of someone who is black there's that idea that she's supposed to be um illiterate um and have all these flaws that they associated with someone black and so you get this in this there's also that 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 when you think a lot of times of things that's written and who actually writes it as far as the history of Haitian people and that I find very fascinating as well because of course there's that blur of what was actually correct and I think the author is trying to tap into not just what was written by essentially a European white person and also what is passed down from generation of people who are actual Haitian of this woman. And you get to see how that is displayed in the book. And so that's what I'm going to say right now. Um, and yeah, I'm adjust this camera later because why am I blurry guys? <laughs> so anyway. I'm enjoying this because of the, 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 the history and the historical content in this. Again, this is heavy on historical fiction. So if you are not heavy on reading historical fiction, um, you might not like it because it's not so much about this centralizing this like a storyline. This She's dropping facts in this. Um, and there's quite a few things that I find myself stopping to look up and you uh, know that kind of deal. I um, can't wait to when I'm done and I get to actually read her, write her notes because she does kind of go in detail where she gets her information from to, that inspire her to write the story, um, which I like. But we, we, we're still pushing through day three. Um, I, I definitely will finish this soon. 
um it does read fairly fast i, I didn't find myself struggling or um you know having a hard time with this it's it's, it's actually the writing is very much um easy to really turn the pages to be honest with you so that's where i'm at with this and I'm almost done with my junk journal, guys, but I think I'm going to do a separate video of what I normally did, like the last two, where I just did a, fifth, a flip through. Um, but I picked up some gadgets. Maybe I should show you guys the gadgets. I'm not going to show you the, the journal yet because it's not done and also kind of want to wait till I'm done, done, done. I did something totally different with it, but I will explain that in, that, in the video when I do do it. But let's show you some little trinkets that I picked up. Yeah. Let's so guys, my stuff is a little junky. So let's see. So I bought this case because I had so much extra stuff that I have. But before, I got a lot of these. I did not know it was going to be that many in here. because and, and it was so affordable. But I had no clue that it was going to... I'm going to have these for days, guys. I'm going to have these for days. Look, look. <laughs> this... These are great for if I want to have some ribbons or beads um, in the different color. I actually used this one on the journal and it was big enough where I could fit a lot of stuff and it's sturdy. Um, I don't know what else I'm going to find to use with these but oh my goodness. It's a lot. So in here... It's stuff I use all the time so nothing in here is really new these are just um, except for these I had smaller ones for what I got for the other hooks but other than this I use a lot of eyelid so these I had for a while I, I don't know when I'm ever gonna finish this but I have this one for a while um, I bought these two for the color because this is the rose gold I don't know if it's gonna pick up on camera and then also this one in silver and I think these are the 316 I think I don't remember and then I have some smaller ones in gold and these are some different kind of eyelid and of course I have some gold ones bigger ones these are the fun ones that I have I have a stack of these but they all different look at the shape which I did use on a journal and it's different kinds that I have there's some Christmassy one in here as well for holiday season but you can see yeah um, and then in the bottom these are some of my tools, my eyelid tools. Um, this is the the one I used for my for the bigger size. So I use that. Um, this actually came with these. So these are also eyelids. What I like about these is yeah, I don't broke the thing already. Is it's different color. So black, green, red, blue, another shade of blue, pink, then these are some silver ones, orange, yellow, and white. I love these and I've used some of those already. I gotta figure a way how to get this back because I broke it. And then I have more tools. So this one, this it came with this one. I liked it because it's a smaller version of this one so this is my big one and I do have a bigger one than this one actually um, but it's the same it's just this has two different sizes, and this one is more sturdy to me and better um, plus you know I like that it's plastic on the handle and then this one it needs some plastic on the handle but it only has one size which you know you cut the hole and then you, you just put it together so I like that and then these are for my bigger holes that I want to punch I use these I have two it's the same exact thing and um this 
what I have. Can I just put it here and And then, yeah. and I just put it away in my little storage area. So, this is definitely not gonna fit. So that's, but it's fine because it has its own case. And this is where I put all of my other trinket. I have a lot, tons, tons, tons. This is just the top. And then I have here. So I have a lot of these fun keys. Um, buttons, edge protector. These buttons as clock. I have tons of stuff in here that I use. Um, I love these black safety pins. I use these a lot. Um, my glass stuff. There's tons of this. And I collect them because Oftentimes they're on sale at Michael's and they'll be 50% off or sometimes I buy them on the clearance at Michael's and I keep them. Some of them I did get at, um, on Amazon. Like I got these on Amazon because Michael's typically don't have the edge protectors and I only have two of these left and which is going to end up being a waste because you need I need four whenever I use them. Um, but I'll figure it out. But I have tons of different kinds. Um, I have this kind. It's tons. But this is um, a little bit of my, I call my little trinket, my little cute stuff. There's one here. I got to figure out how to use this one. This is so nice. This is another, again, a key thing. Um, yeah. So some of my stuff that I tend to use on my journal that I love to put on there. Hey guys, so it's, it's, it's my favorite day because it's Friday, the last of the week. So let's get into this. Um, one of the things I'm going to say is I love the commitment that Vanessa Riley has to share historical books that are inspired and based on true women in history from the Caribbean. Um, she has really opened my eyes to a lot of things I didn't know. She has really had me intrigued where I am doing my own research and I'm own, you know, I'm I'm going out of my way to actually look up things. There's also this understanding that I find myself thinking about when I read these books because of how complicated it was. When you think of um Louise Marie Christophe and her journey, her life story, which is also, there's a lot of things about it that is understandable, but there's some things that you realize that she was living in a somewhat not reality for many. So when you think of this book also, think of the fact that she was, a, she was never a slave. So there's that mentality that she doesn't understand um, and she can see things much clearer compared to um, her husband, the king, who was once a slave. So he has this, what, the song I think of is Bob Marley Redemption, where he said, emancipate yourself from mental slavery, none but ourselves can free our minds. And this is how I interpret that king. He wanted to be recognized as a nation that's free, which they were free. But he wanted to be recognized by the same people who colonized him. Um, 
but doing so by emulating them. By wanting this kingdom that essentially took away from the people. Um, there's that greater gold, but in doing so, the people, some suffered from that financially. And, and even how he, he even himself, because he was robbing himself from, from actually growing in a way that freedom should have allowed him to do. Now, there's that conflict, there is that um, which, within yourself. And in this story, you do learn, it's, it is public record that um, he on a life himself. Now with that, he did that um, in fear, um, in failure, um, and potentially he would have been killed anyway. <laughs> Um, when you know think of the storyline of how he got to power But then you think of the women in his life you have the queen Who oftentimes didn't have a voice? Um, I think There's that there's that really big issue of women having voices in a lot of revolution where um, They they were important But oftentimes sometimes not respected by the men who feel like that's not their role um, so you get that in this. She's also now having to flee with her daughters. One who's ill, which we know now was she had asthma, but it was never, there, there's no name for it at the time. Um, so, and there was no treatment at the time. So that was something to deal with where she was this striving um, artist and she couldn't even enjoy what she, or cry for what she does. Um, you have another um, daughter who's um, somewhat um, enjoying certain things and living in 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 essence that where the where the mother and the other daughter really wasn't living. Um, I thought that was interesting. Now this book is really heavy on history. There's a lot of newspaper article in this, like actual real newspaper article in this. So every chapter there's like something leading up to what she's gonna talk about, and there's like a, a newspaper ad that kind of give you like what was where she was being exiled for her which is i find very interesting because the fact is you are escaping some colonizer but <laughs> the colonizer one colonizer took you in and you're living in that country but then you are dealing with the industrial situation that was not good for an asthmatic child so you went to another country and you are like in as because your title is queen and you still have wealth, which in reality, there's so many different tales of where the wealth came from because there's that, oh, she was traveling around the world to, to collect her husband's um, wealth. And then there's also the fact that she had jewelry that was very expensive that she was able to live off. So that's also a tale. We're not hundred percent, but the way the story is written, it's 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 portrayed that most of her wealth was the jewelry that she had, which she was able to sell. That that is absolutely worth a lot of money in that time. In present time, it would have been worth millions. Um, that she was able to live off and be able to smooth with these people, and the fact that she was black is also interesting for me in this story because. It shows that because money was attached to her and money that they couldn't touch, money that they couldn't themselves try to get, it's like they had to tolerate her in a space because of wealth, which I thought was another interesting thing. There's a little bit of a romance of someone who is actually has a very a reputation that shot me in a little bit of why he wanted her. Uh, the author. And now uh, what was actually published in real life, there's that contradiction because they don't want to believe that this white prince actually wanted her. And But there are letters proving that he did. He never actually said her name, but he did mention that she was black. <laughs> but you, based on the letter, you know it was her, that kind of deal. 
I thought that was interesting. I would love to see those original letters, you know, just because I think that's just, it's a bit interesting for that time period. Again, we're talking 1800. We're talking, um, she got exiled in 1821. So we're talking 1821. She passed away in 1851. So we're talking that time period where you know that was not the norm. But she is portrayed as being beautiful, eye-catching kind of uh, look. Um, the fact that that was uh, um, something that was added to the story and was actually real, <laughs> I thought was interesting. Now, this book is really just... I feel like this was like a history book that is portrayed as fiction because the only thing, the only reason I think some this book is just you have to staple it as fiction because you don't really know what was going on in her head. So the author was just interpreting what she think the the that the queen might have been saying, but everything else happened <laughs> in this book. So which makes me love it even more because I am a history buff. I love history. I love especially historical fiction that really gives you stories that you can actually go look up and read about. I love that she did her research, which meant that this book took a lot of dedication to write because it is filled with historical content. Now, it makes me even um, find it more fascinated when I think of the history of Haiti. Haiti history is so rich and strong and complicated and messy and heartbreaking um, and how they are basically still paying for the freedom that they got. They are still having to give France free money for their own because they won their freedom. Essentially driving the, the, the him mad and doing the things that he was doing because of the fact that you are trying to to measure up to something that was never intended for you to measure up to. And um, it is just sad that you see the history and how even now there's always a case of somebody taking something. Somebody um, taking away from the people. And, and it seems like there's a long history of that. Because essentially, even though his intentions might have been good he still took away from the people and and sadly it's it's never stopped <laughs> so um I, I i'm curious to see where she's going next who is she going to um what woman in the history she's going to um commit a story to um i i love these kind of um take on strong women who survive um, sad. She was sad. This again. This is a lot of sadness going on in this book. Um, nevertheless, she lived. Um, she took care of her, her, her children. Um, she was mourning most of it because her sons were all killed. Um, and there's always that underlying story of someone wanting power um, that she's dealt with. But she's also smart in terms of how she see people looking at her and what she was willing to, to give them. Because they always wanted something. They want, they were so intrigued by her. They wanted something. And so you can tell that she tried to hold on to things that she would never share, that we probably would never know. Um, and, and that's okay. That's okay. Because that means she held on to some of her. Um, so yeah, I... Again, this is for historical fiction fans. This is for history people, people who love history. This is a book for you because other than that, I think some people might not find it as uh, as interested as I do because um, it is very much heavy on the history. So if you are not heavy on historical fiction, heavy on uh, storylines like that, don't pick it up because you're going to be just like, wow, what am I reading a history book? Because you, you really are. <laughs> So, um, the queen did love her personality. Um, I like that they gave her a, a nice setup in Italy. There is a monument for her where she was buried. Um, she actually helped build a church because she was very Catholic. And, you know, thinking of that time period, it, that wasn't a great thing to be in some, in some countries, in some, in, in circles. Um, you know, so... Um, but she sticks to what she believes, and, and that is how she lived her life. 
and I like that again there's a monument for her that you can actually see um, and um, I do feel sad that she outlived all her children um, she was in her 70s when she passed but she outlived every single one of her kids um, which can be another sadness you think about with the Queen but other than that she was believed to be fabulous she dressed very nice and wore her jewelry <laughs> wore her things and lived a very comfortable life um she, she until the day she died <laughs> and there's always that um surrounding the money and where is the money where did the money go all that kind of you know jazz but um but yeah miss uh, louise marie christophe all right guys so i'm gonna end this here if you made it to the end of the video don't forget a journal move starts on the first I will be doing a video after this, giving you the whole rundown on my new journal that I made that I am enjoying. It's 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 a perfect green, and it's very earth tone that I wanted to to have on it. Something different to try for every one that I make, and we'll talk about that in the next video. So I will see you in a day or two. All right, bye.